Hello everyone, it's me again, and today we're going to be doing a lab, but you're not actually going to be in the lab to do this one. Uh, so this is one that I am going to do for you, but you are very welcome to do this one as well and collect your own data, because all you're going to need is yourself, obviously, and some M&Ms. So you get some M&Ms, maybe a cup of sorts, and you're just going to collect your data. So today we're going to be talking about radioactive decay, and we're going to be looking at half-life, and we're going to be using our M&Ms to simulate how that's going to work. So grab some M&Ms and get ready. I'm going to show you how this works. All right, guys, here's the deal. I have my cup with all, in this case, I have 80 M&Ms. Whenever you're doing this at home, if you're doing it, it doesn't have to be 80 exactly. You're going to be collecting your own data. It really doesn't matter how many you start with. I could have started with, you know, 10. I could have started with 100, right? It doesn't really matter. Although if you have 100, that means you have that much more that you can eat afterwards. So um, so I'm going to have 80, in this case, M&Ms. These M&Ms, they are going to represent radioactive nuclei, right? They are going to be radioactive atoms. And because these are nice M&Ms, they have on, both, on one side, they've got the M, if you can see that, right? That M versus blank. In other words, we've got two sides. These two sides are going to represent when the atom is still radioactive or when it flips, okay? We're going to say that face, well, actually, I have that backwards. If it's face down, if it's blank, that means it is radioactive. But as soon as it flips over and it is an M showing, we're going to say that has decayed. In other words, it has decayed into a more stable uh, nuclei and it's done. So what we're going to do is I'm putting all of my M&Ms, all of my radioactive atoms in my cup, and we are going to simulate this half-life. So the way this is going to work, I'm going to shake my cup, and I'm just going to pour them all out, and they are going all over the place. Okay. So we are going to go through and we are going to separate. We have our face up ones that have decayed and we have our face down ones that are still radioactive. So I'm just gonna split these into two piles real quick. Uh, one thing to note, uh, well, I think I might've accidentally turned one over there, but these yellow ones are really hard to see sometimes. So it doesn't look like it, but some of these do have M's facing up. Yep, that one's face up. So we are just going to pick through to do and get rid of all of my decayed atoms. So remember the face up, the M's face up are our decayed atoms. Okay. So before I did this, I should have made a prediction. So I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction. I had 80 atoms. Okay. And we're talking about half life. So if I were to guess how many, atoms would still be radioactive after my toss, I'm going to guess about half. So I'm going to guess about 40 of them were going to stay radioactive. Okay, so I've got my two piles here, okay, right? This pile was decayed. So once I've separated this out, I'm actually done with these. These guys are completely decayed. They are now stable. They get to be off to the side. In fact, I'm going to they're pretty good. So these are the ones that I'm going to deal with, and I'm going to count. So this is where the data collection comes into place. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38. Wow, I was pretty close. So this one ended up having 41 nuclei left. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So I've got 41 nuclei. These are still radioactive. We're going to say that was our first round, right? So that was our first half-life of sorts. I'm going to keep these. I'm going to put them back in my cup. And I am going to do this all over again. So now this is toss number two in my data table. I now have 41. I'm just going to give it a nice little shake and dump them out. Sometimes you might have to flatten them, okay? So there we go, and we're going to just do the same thing. I'm going to get rid of my radioactive. Once again, I forgot to make pre my prediction, though. So in this case, I had 41 atoms. So I'm going to guess that, mm, let's say 20 of them are going to still be radioactive after this. So I'm going to get rid of all my 
decayed ones. Okay. Once again, these have decayed, right? I know they're not actually radioactive atoms, but we're going to pretend. So those have decayed, so those are safe now. Those are good to eat, right? They're safe now. <laughs> so let's give it a count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. So now we've got 19. Our predictions are holding fairly close. So we're going to keep going. I'm going to put these back in. I'm going to remember to make my prediction this time. If I have 19, um, I'm going to guess 10 because I like nice even numbers. So I'm going to guess that 10 are going to still be radioactive. Okay. All right, let's get rid of them one. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, looks like there's a lot that decayed this time. So I think my prediction might be off a good bit. Okay, so now I've got three, six, seven, eight. So I have eight radioactive nuclei left. We take these decayed ones off to the side and we keep going. I'm gonna keep doing this and you'll see in the data table that I'll, that I'll provide for you. We'll have all the information. If you're doing this on your own, hold on, forgot to make my prediction. If I have eight, I'm going to guess that there's going to be four left. If you're doing this on your own, you are going to have your own numbers uh, to deal with, but it'll work just fine as well. Looks like this one, uh, as opposed to last round, not very many decayed. So I'm going to pull those off to the side. It looks like I've got two, four, six left. I've got six. So my prediction wasn't spot on exactly, but know that each time I toss, each of these has a 50-50 chance of being radioactive or decayed. So, let's see, if I've got six, I'm gonna predict maybe three. Now when we get to this small sample size, it gets a little harder to predict right on. So, ooh, looks like there's only one that decayed this time. So I've got five left. So we're gonna do it again. Okay. I will say, if you're doing this at home, make sure you check your M&Ms before you start. Because sometimes uh, they have the little M that's rubbed off. And if the M is not there, then your, your nuclei will never decay. So that would be a problem. Ooh, looks like, wow, this one went all at once. Two, wow. So now I'm down to just one. So this is where we would want to do lots and lots of trials with lots and lots of atoms to see. I am down to one. Half of that is going to decay, I think. Well... Let's just say that I'm going to have zero after this. And of course it had to be a yellow one to end. That looks like it is still radioactive. So I still have one. So now I'm on to my, I believe it's my eighth toss now. Let's keep going. I'm going to predict there's going to be zero again. Hey, there it finally, I don't know if you can see it, it finally decayed. So I'm finally at zero. Just a real quick lab recap. Obviously, this lab we were dealing with Half-Life, Half-Life isn't about M&Ms, right? But the concepts that we learned and the concepts we observed still hold true, even though it was just a sweet, delicious candy, right? So Half-Life we define as half of a sample breaking down. But sometimes it's not always exactly half, right? Remember there was that one round where almost all of them just decayed all at once. So sometimes it's close to half, sometimes not so much. But what we see is that half-life isn't necessarily the specifics about exactly how many atoms will decay. It's more about the rate of decay. So in general, that rate, that 50% decay, holds true. And that's gonna hold true no matter what different variables. So what we see is that rate isn't impacted. You're going to see in the questions below, there's a little picture of a graph, and that graph has the data that we took, okay? And you're going to see that curve, and if you looked up any other half-life curve, you're going to see them pretty much look the same, right? The numbers might be slightly different. Uh, the slope is going to be about the same, though. The graph will always be that same distinct curve, that half-life. So think about what types of factors might impact half-life. A lot of times there's not too much, right? We talk about how temperature and pressure don't impact that. So there's a question about what happens if we shake the M&Ms. That's going to simulate changing the temperature or pressure. So think about how that might impact our curve. Uh, one thing that this is all about, it's all about statistics and probability. So in this case, half-life is sort of like 
flipping a coin. Each of our atoms, after one half-life, has a 50-50 chance of decaying versus be, uh, staying stable. Sorry, decaying or staying radioactive. So think about if you were to follow the path of one M&M, would we be able to tell exactly when that M&M, that atom, decays? No, but every time we roll, we know that there's a 50-50 chance. Just like flipping a coin, right? We don't necessarily know for sure if it's going to be heads or tails, but we can say that half the time it's going to be heads, half the time it's going to be tails. Now, what do you think the number of atoms, the number of M&Ms, or if we're thinking about coin flip, the number of coin flips would do for our numbers? In general, the rate would stay the same, right? However, in science and chemistry, all the time we want lots and lots of data because the more data we get, the more confident we are in our answers. So if you were to do this activity with thousands of M&Ms, you would still see that nice curve. In fact, we would see a lot better curve because we're dealing with such high numbers. Probabilities and statistics work with much larger numbers. So that's our recap on the lab. You're going to have a few questions about the lab below, and then you're also going to have a few just general half-life questions. There's no video guide for this one, but look back at the previous lecture notes if you need uh, some help, and I go over a few of those types of questions. So good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.